The president, uh, good morning, Mr. Nguyen Chia. Is Nguyen Chia your real name? Nguyen Chia, Mr. President, uh, my birth name and revolutionary name are Lao Kum Ro. And revolutionary name indeed, uh, Nguyen Chia. Mr. President, so uh, your real name at birth is Lao Kum Ron. Is that correct? Nguyen Chia, that is correct, Mr. President. My name is Lao Kum Ron at birth. The President, uh, when were you born, Mr. Nguyen Chia? I was born in July the 7th of 1926. My mother was not Chinese, but my father was half Chinese, half Cambodian. My mother was truly Cambodian. The President, where were you born? Nunchi, I was born in Wat Ko village, commune of Wat Ko, not Wat Ko. Songkai District, Bat Dambong Province. The President, thank you. Where did you live before you were arrested? Response I lived in Psa Prum Market. Now it is part of Pailan Province. It was a Pilan district, but it is now the province of Pilan in that location. President, what is your mother's name? Respond, Dang Pien. Uh, the president, is uh, Dos Pien correct? Uh, incorrect. Respond, uh, her name was actually Dang Pien, although my father's family name was Do. But uh, I think her name was uh, Dang Pien. The president, what is your father's name? Respond, Lao Liu. Question, your wife's name, please. Response, Li Kum Seng. Question, how many siblings do you have? How many brothers and sisters? Response, I have nine siblings, six of whom died. Uh, the the survival brothers. No, I have two uh, survival sisters and one brother. Question: Where did you come in your family? Response: I was the third child. Or I am the third child, rather. The President, uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia, could you tell the court your brief educational background? Response. When I was seven years old during the French uh, colonial regime, I was in the Ong Phong Tang in, uh, in Khmer room 5 and then con uh, uh, was uh, in the room 4 and then Elementaire uh, room 3 and then 2. Then I took the exam in Phnom Penh and I studied uh, in Lycée in Badambong, Premier Ne. In 1941, Badambong was uh, given to Thailand and I continued my education in Thailand.
the president. What subject uh, was the major of uh, your subject of study at uh, in Thailand? Did you study at a university? Response: I started at the at at uh, grade five and six, and then I started the preparatory class uh, for Thammasat uh, University. Of moral and it is the University of Morale and Political Science. Uh, the preparatory course uh, lasted uh, for two years, and then I became a full try student uh, for another full year. During the course of my education, I also had a part. Uh, I had a job. I work as a an official at the Thai military, uh, Thai rather Thai ministry. Uh, in finance. Then I worked at the Foreign Affairs Ministry for one month. I observed the reports from the embassy, the Thai embassy to Cambodia concerning the uh, shooting deaths of Cambodian people by the French and I was heartbroken and of course suffered from the news and I then started the resistance uh, movement uh, to uh, help my uh, people in 1950 and 1951. That's all. The President, thank you. Mr. Nguyen Chi, as an accused person before the chamber, you have, for the duration of trial in K002, the following rights. To be defended by a lawyer of your choice at every stage of the proceedings. The chamber notes that you are Presently, represented by four defense lawyers, one national and three international. And that you were also continuously represented during the investigative phase. You have the right to remain silent at every stage of the proceedings, to be protected against cell incrimination, and to be informed of the charges brought against you. Mr. Nunchi, have you been notified of the charges against you? Response Mr. President, I have read some documents. The President, are you aware of what charges you have been uh, have been brought against uh, you? Response: With regard to the war crime, genocide, and other wars, I don't recollect. I think. There are crimes against uh, against humanity, perhaps. The president. We would like uh, to really confirm the charges against uh, you. According to document D427, you have been charged with crimes against uh, humanity and there are several crimes under this, uh, including murder, extermination, enslavement, forced movement, uh, forced transfer, imprisonment, torture, rape, 
persecution on political or racial grounds are the inhuman acts. The second crime uh, is the uh, the genocide, uh, the genocide, the killing of uh, Vietnamese and Chams, and grave breaches of Geneva Convention of the 12th of August uh, 1949. These crimes include other sub crimes as follow: uh, willful uh, murder, premeditated uh, or willful killing, torture, inhuman treatment willfully causing great sufferings to serious injury to body or health, willfully depri depriving a prisoner of war or civilly in the rights of fair and regular trial, unlawful deportation of a civilian and unlawful confinement of a civilian. Through the passive and active actions committed through planning, ordered, uh, aiding and abetting and also responsible in the form of uh, senior responsibility with regard to the crimes committed within the Kingdom of Cambodia and during the incursion in the Vietnamese territory in uh, during the period of uh, 17 of April 1975 uh, through the 6th of January 1979, uh, crimes punishable under Articles 5, 6, and 29 new and also the ECC uh, law. According to the order issued uh, by the pretrial chamber with regard to the appeal against uh, your uh, again the closing order, there are several other documents uh, relevant to this. However, the documents issued uh, by the chamber have uh, altered. Uh, a some portion of the documents, for example, regarding rape, in which uh, the pretrial chamber already changed it to the other inhuman acts instead. Uh, so these are the charges uh, against uh, you. And the chamber would like to also inform you that uh, you have already been informed of uh, this uh, through the, in the the order by the co-investigating judges and that uh, you have had the opportunities to appeal against uh, the closing order by the co-investigating judges. Uh, the order which already ruled on by the pre-trial chamber on the, uh, on the 13th of January 2011. You have already filed uh, appeals against the preliminary objections uh, matters. Uh, and uh, through your counsel, you have been informed of the crimes, uh, uh, the charges against you. On the 21st of November 2011, charges against you have already been read out by the Greffier. So, the Chamber notes that you have already been informed of the charges against you. Next, uh, the chamber would like to proceed to uh, uh, hand over to Judge uh, Silver Catry to proceed with the questioning of the accused. With regard to the historic 
history of my resistance movement. I don't know whether such uh, activity also included in such charges, and I want the chamber to be informed. I really treat this court as an institution which is well honored. The co-prosecutors and the judges are the highly respected people who preserve justice, who find proper justice beneficial to everyone. If the president allows me, I would like to describe to the chamber the history of my resistance at the initial stage and I can then be questioned. The President, indeed, uh, you are allowed to proceed. Nguyen Chia, thank you, Mr. President. The summary of my struggle is listed as follows. What made me have an idea to join the resistance movement? When I was young, I lived under the French colony. I witnessed with my own eyes the mistreatment of the French toward Cambodian people. People were beaten, arrested, and imprisoned. And I also witnessed the rich mistreated other people, treated them as slaves, beaten them, and so on and so forth. This made me, as a young man, although I was not a real nationalist, but I had this sympathy, I have the co compassion for justice, the justice, the love of justice that really embed well in my mind. That's why I did hate such oppression and mistreatment by the French colony and by the rich people, the landowners, the powerful people who were purely Cambodian as we were, as we are. When I grew up, I went to school. I gradually were educated and I graduated at Lycees of Bat Dambong in 1941 the French really uh, gave Bat Dambong and Siem Reap provinces including Sisopon to Thailand I wanted to know what an independent country was like. That is why I went to study in Thailand, taking refuge in the pagoda because my family was poor. They were peasants. My father uh, did not do well in business and my mother sold cakes and cookies 
and at the same time, uh, I had to help uh, them out uh, during weekend to sell their cookies. I thought that uh, the country or uh, Thailand uh, was also independent. However, being there, I noted that Thailand was not independent because I observed that uh, some powerful people were oppressing the weak. And there were mainly, the Thailand was mainly dominated by the Chinese. And the Thai people suffered greatly as the Cambodian people did. So I had the idea that where, wherever it was, ju injustice was everywhere. So I started to read Thai newspaper. We call the progressive newspaper or the public uh, newspaper produced by Communist Party of Thailand. After reading the newspaper's articles, I have also observed that uh, communism or the communist regime could help resolve the countries under the oppression of the colonies to really liberate the country from such colonialism. And I really took that seriously. But I did not really fully understand what communism was at that time. There were some friends of mine who were Thais, who attended the same school, uh, the same uh, university, Thammasat University. At Thammasat University, every professor was regarded as the progressive person. Oh, they, they, they were lecturing students. And I started to understand gradually the situation. In Thailand, there was an organization, uh, an organization called the Democratic Youth Organization of Thailand. I attended or I joined uh, this organization to conduct some activities and I attended meeting sessions and they noted that I was Cambodian, I was allowed to talk about the oppression of the French colony in Cambodia, and I really did uh, talk in the sessions. I did against uh, the powerful people in Thailand who really oppressed uh, their weak own people alongside with other progressive people. Later, they noted that I was a very active person in 1950. I signed up in the Communist Party of Thailand. On the 7th of July, I asked the Communist Party of Thailand to join the resistance uh, movement in Cambodia because I noted that the French really severely oppressed the Cambodian people. Communist Party of Thailand allowed me through uh, their branches in uh, the in Thailand to conduct activities in Cambodia for my course. Then I came to Cambodia. I worked in the propaganda section, publishing newspaper, educating people to realize how they were treated and to stimulate their sentiment against uh, the oppression. At that time, Israel movement was already in existence. It was their 
1946, there were dark chun as well, who was really the fake Isarak. Actually, there were real or genuine Isarak. For example, like Kai Muni, like Sung Ngoc Minh. But who actually created them? They were created by the Vietnamese. Vietnam introduced communism into Cambodia and created a communist party in Campuchia. But at that time, Cambodian people hated the Vietnamese. They really hated them. And they did not want to join the Communist Party. For that reason, no one really signed up for the party. In light of that, the Vietnamese brought some people from Koh Sang Sin, a few of them. For example, Sơn Ngoc Minh. Uh, he was called Acha Mien previously. He was ordained as a monk in Phnom Penh. And he was contacted by or convinced uh, by uh, Vietnam. And Siu Heng also was persuaded. Siu Heng were also Cam Cambodia crown. And then Lam Pai, another Khmer crown. To work as a, a board or a committee for the Communist Party. So Communist Party of Khmer was not really established by the Cambodian people movement or resistance movement of Cambodia. It was actually installed by the Vietnamese. It is really the truth. So this party was already created when arms when arms were already allowed because the armed movement was in place. As I indicated, the Isra movement was in place. The Communist Party did not really have a secret uh, resistance. Uh, it did not really evolve from small party to a bigger one. It, it is really the uniqueness of uh, the party, a uh, communist party of Cambodia. Grandfather Tu Samut, who was the secretary of the party, once said that the communist party of Khmer was not born from a normal cause of birth. It was born from the ribs the side ribs, which means extraordinarily born. This party was not progressing well it, because it was under the control of the Vietnamese. Sơn Ngoc Minh was the member of the committee, but he was also under the Communist Party of Hindu Chinese. The party uh, really chaired by Thanh Sơn. And Thanh Sơn was uh, the person who was behind all the decision making. So the committee that I indicated so far uh, for the Communist Party of Khmer was only Vietnamese puppet because decision made by the Vietnamese, although the party was created for Cambodia. I would like to proceed further by saying that Vietnam trusted me and appointed me to study in the north of Vietnam. And I also noted the party statue concerning the establishment of the Indo-Chinese Federation, which said that 
when Cambodia, Vietnam, and Laos were united and independent, then the Indo-Chinese Federation would be installed under control of Vietnam. I was so disappointed to hear that because I was fighting very hard against the French uh, for independence. But what would be independence uh, under the control of another country? I, I didn't understand that. Indeed, uh, there were still people uh, in Vietnam who really re real communists. But then there was the Geneva Conve Convention in 1954. I returned uh, to Cambodia. And I saw nothing because the Khmer people who who were in the resistance movements were demobilized and dismissed to live in the regime under the governance of the royal government of Kampuchea. This means they were arrested, imprisoned, and so on and so forth. Brutality was inflicted onto them. No more peasants, no more pedophiles, because uh, peasants had to really pawn their fields and cattle for the re sexual release of their loved ones. There was more resistance movement. The seats for resistance was demolished. Finally, there were only two branches of the party, one in Tramka in the southwest and another one in Piem Commune. With very few branches of the party, we were frustrating. We were frustrated indeed. Vietnam did not follow the Geneva Convention. Vietnam hit their forces in Cambodia in order for them to continue their activities for their struggle in South Vietnam. It was Le Yun, Hai So, and other Vietnamese leaders who came to live in Cambodia. They could not live in Prainoko because they would be oppressed by the French. At that time, there were the presence of the Americans already, so they were not able to live there. So they sought the help of Cambodia for them to live. And when they were here, they came to lead a number of Israel people. For example, Kauta, Puchai, and others to join with the, to join the struggle. These were bandits. These were brutal people who would fight for their own benefits. They disguised as Israel people, but they fought for their own benefits. I was observing closely the situation when I was in Thailand. I came to understand that it was not progressing in Cambodia with the current, with the then leaders. So I contacted Thai party in which I was a member to come back and work in Cambodia as I mentioned earlier. And when I came here, I witnessed with my own eyes that everything was under the control of Vietnam. 
even the cook, the cooks were Vietnamese. Cambodians were not allowed to do anything, but they were allowed to be messengers. They were allowed to be soldiers, but indeed there were also Khmer commanders, for example, in the in the northwest zone in Cambodia. But the real commanders were not Khmer. They were only installed in order to persuade Khmer people to join the army. And when there was the Geneva Agreement, as I referred to earlier, there were a number of Khmer people who came back to their country. Some said that there were about 1,500 or 2,000 Khmer people were, who were brought to be educated in Vietnam, who were educated to be cadres, so that they can come back, they could come back and work in Cambodia. So this is the story. So there, were, there was no Khmer Communist Party. This is what I want to inform everyone. There was only a new Chinese Communist Party or a Cambodian Communist Party under the control of the Indo Chinese Party under and further under the control of Vietnam. My people could not do anything. They were only passenger messengers, interpreter correct. So this is the full story. I'm not attacking Vietnam. It is rather a fact. It is the truth that I witnessed with my own eyes. And later on, after we have the Geneva Agreement in 19... In 1960, there were intellectuals from France coming to Cambodia. These included Salot Sor, Ieng Sari, among others. And some Cambodians who joined the Thai party also came back to Cambodia and there were also a number of other people who come from uh, Vietnam and these were referred to as Khmer Viet Minh. So there were these three elements coming from France, from Vietnam, the Khmer Viet Minh, and people from Thailand. The Marxist ideology was being practiced, but people had different ideas. So it was not possible for the parties to unite, and as a result, the party was dismantled. People took revenges against each other. There were accusations against each other. So this is what I want to inform everyone, that the Communist Party of Kampuchea was not created by pure Cambodians by pure Khmer, it was the Vietnamese who created this party. So there was a coup, the Lonald's coup d'etat against Sihanouk, the king, 
and after the dismissal, his dismissal, the king appealed to the people to enter the Maki jungle. There were both good people and bad people who joined the jungle. There were these people, Jab, Dab Chun, Hul Vung, and others who were actually bandits and they were jo they they were joining with us these people <coughs> arrested and killed Cambodian people and they placed the blame on the Cambodian Communist Party some people were wearing black shoes and were disguised as the resistant group in order to liberate the country. But actually, they were arresting, they were killing people. It was very, very complicated at that time. So it was very hard for us to understand. Everything is chaotic. There were also people from, rather, there were also traitors within the Lunol group. There were also traitors within the Khmer Rouge group. So what we could do was, what they could do was to seek the help from the Americans, that is to bombard from the aeroplane on the Cambodian soil. As I remember, it was from, it started from 17th of May. It started from then. So this is the history of a party known as the Khmer Communist Party. So it was not originated from the Khmer resistance. I am very honest here. So I don't want everyone to misunderstand that it is Cambodian people who are responsible for the war crimes or other crimes that were read a while ago. Everything was under the control of Vietnam from the Hanoi headquarters or from the Ho Chi Minh headquarters. So these crimes, war crimes, crimes against humanity were not, and genocide were not, were not for Cambodian people. It was Vietnam who killed Cambodians. So this is the summary of the history of this party. I don't want the next generations to misunderstand the history. I don't want to misunderstand that the Khmer Rouge are bad people, are criminals. Nothing is true about that. Cambodians are Buddhist, are Buddhist followers. Even though they joined Communist Party, they are st still respecting Buddhism. When there were bombs, the B-52, they were recalling or appealing for the help of from Buddha. 
So it was not the universal communism. It was the national communism. There were nationalists who wished to protect the country, to liberate, to liberate the country from Vietnam. That is why there was um, there was also a war or fighting on the 17th of January 1990, says the speaker. So we want to know how many Vietnamese people now in Cambodia, both legal and illegal Vietnamese. For the future of Cambodia, if you're not trying to to protect the country, the country will be gone. So this is what I want to inform you, Mr. President, that when Sandai Sianu visited Cambodia in 1973 in Kampung Thom province, rather Kampung Krum, correct the speaker, and also in Siem Reap province. I was ordered by Pol Pot to protect some that. I heard children singing and I would like to sing that our country is is gone our country is demolish, demolishing so we have to try my, tear, my tears dropped when I heard this song So everything has been charged against us. It's wrong. At the present time, we see enemies as friends. It is too bad that uh, enemies have been mistaken as friends. As I indicated, the strategy of the Vietnamese is like the python suffocating a young deer. One day, the deer will sadly become prey of the python and it will be swallowed. However, my position is still firm. I still maintain solidarity, unification, and I still want the country to live peacefully with its neighbors. Vietnamese, Thais, and others, but we have to be very cautious. As I indicated, uh, when the young buffalo tender who read, who sang that, uh, my dear Cambodia, the country is falling, we have to do our best to save it before it's too late. And accusations or charges against uh, me is not correct, it's not right, because I have devoted myself to serving the country. I have to put my family behind for the, the love of my country. People may laugh at me by saying this, but it is true, monks can be my witnesses. Thank you, Mr. President and your honors. That is all from me. And I thank you, the bench, for allowing me to briefly tell my nation about uh, this. I could have been longer than that uh, if I have read uh, from the book, but it is now all. Thank you, the President. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nunchi, for your observation with regard to the history summary of history of the Communist Party of Cambodia and your days and childhood and how you 
joined uh, this uh, movement. Since it is already appropriate time for lunch adjournment, the chamber will take uh, the adjournment uh, for 90 minutes.